What about Orion's belt? I yeah. I don't know. Because I think that one too, right? You have the pyramids in Egypt. You have very not only the pyramids in Egypt, but how many structures on this planet mimic Orion's belt? Yeah. Ancient. Orion's belt, you know, if I had to rate it, I'd give it three stars. <laughs> <laughs> And if you guys don't get that, that's because of Ryan's belt is three stars. <laughs> we can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink. Click, clack, clickety clack. We're yeah. back at it. Dang, it's it's been a minute since we've recorded. You guys won't notice because we're spread out a week apart. But we we prepare for these things because we know our lives, our schedules. You've been out internet with for out like a month now. Uh, but that's good. It's good news. So if you're listening and you're like, "Well, why is Mark without internet?" It's good news. He got a job finally. Someone, you know, this poor pathetic piece of guy is not yeah. living off. <laughs> No, COVID, you know, <laughs> COVID times. Everyone's been struggling with jobs, and I have uh, been extremely fortunate to find one in COVID times, you know. There's not a lot of people out there that have found jobs. Um, so, you know, I count my blessings each and every day. But, yes, I do have a new job. I'm in a new place, and I'm in a whole new world. You know, I have never been here. I'm in Southern Oregon in beautiful Ashland, Oregon. If uh, any of you listeners have been there, it's gorgeous. Sits in kind of some mountains. Um, this is the farthest I've lived from the ocean. So uh, it will be a different trip. It's still reachable, it's still reachable. So, you know, if I do get homesick from that ocean, just got to head west, put my feet in the sand, get a bowl of clam chowder, and I am good to go. <laughs> you know, I find that funny because you, you little coasty you, I didn't realize that, but it makes sense because whenever I say like, well, come out west, you know, you would do well out here. You're kind of hesitant and it makes sense. You need that Pacific water or something. There's something about the salt and the water uh, amounts and how close your proximity is that you must need that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm 28 years old right now, and well, so let's see, 21 of those years, I have lived in a place where I can physically see the ocean. <laughs> nice. So, you know, I just I've just never. It's not like honestly to be real, it's not something I've uh, like when I'm picking places, I haven't gone. Uh, Oh no, that's too far from the ocean. It just happens. No, <laughs> I, I happened to move to uh, Corvallis, which was the record holder for farthest from the ocean. And then Humboldt's next to the ocean. And now I'm in Ashland, which is a wee bit farther, but not too, too much farther. <laughs> well, I, I get that because I don't know, mountains for me, kind of similar. When I, I was born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, you got Sandia Mountains right there, right in town. Um, you have, then I moved up here to Montana where you got the beautiful Beartooth Mountains that you can see. My parents uh, on their, in their house, they actually just sold their house. Uh, they closed in May on that. So congrats to them. I know that was a big thing they've been wanting to do here. Um, but they, uh, there was a nice little spot where our piano was. And if you kind of stood behind the piano, you could look out the window, you could see both the Beartooths and the Bighorn Mountains from. Um, you get sunset just right. You'd be like, ooh, we're in for a treat tonight. You know, um, I like that. I like being able to, you know, on my drive home from work, see the Beartooth Mountains, especially when it when there is a sunset right behind them. Is one of you know, Montana sunset sunrises are some of the most glorious things you'll ever see in your life, you know. And so when you get the opportunities to see them, definitely do it. Um, I get it because when I lived in Oregon, to me, your mountains are not mountains, and they are mountains, but like it's different, you know. It is different, you know. They're, they're peaks. Well, we, we've talked about it like before 
um you know because like the rockies are so massive and it's really spread out you know whereas like the cascades which is like oregon's mountain range a big one i think there's the northeast part the idaho i think there's mountains there um but the cascades is the big one that runs kind of down the middle you know it's it's just literally just a line of mountains you know there's you can get one side or the other pretty quick. It's not like the Rockies where it's just this massive, you'll be in it for hours driving. You're like, am I out of the Rockies yet? you will be like, well, no, I you're mean, still up in it. Specifically so, you're right, because the Cascades are one of those mountains where you can be at Mount Hood and look down and see the sisters and look up and see Mount Rainier and see um, what used to be uh, Mount St. Helens or what still is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But you're able to do that where in the Rockies, you're looking at the same mountain peaks on the same mountain you're a part of, you know. So I'm in the crazy mountains. That's the only mountains I'm seizing. I'm in the bear tooths. I'm only seeing the bear tooths um, because there's so many of those ranges in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. Where the Cascades are kind of like their own range even. Yeah, it's its own like, yeah, it's its own range, you know, so. Well, they're volcanic and these ones are plates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, like, they are the same, but different. Yeah, same. <laughs> Outside, same, same. Inside, different. <laughs> yeah. So, no. But, no, that's, I mean, you know, the mountains are cool. Well, mountain and sunsets are phenomenal, but I will, yeah. uh, I'll trade a mountain sunset for a beautiful ocean sunset any day. You, you, you're you beaches over mountains kind of guy, huh? I love, I, that's why Oregon works well for me. Cause you know, it's like, I can go touch the ocean and a peak all in the same day if I really wanted to. <laughs> yeah, no, not the same here. Um, but it's still, it's beautiful. That's what makes this world beautiful. You know, is for sure you go, you, that's here, right? You can go to Japan you can get that same Oregon feel with, you know, something else. Uh, you go to China, you go to the Himalayas, you get all these different, yeah. you know, the Swiss Alps and each one is unique and different to its own, just like beauty. Um, but again, I go to my creation story. I take my Blackfoot creation story. That's kind of, you know, you got the backbone of the world, the Rocky Mountains, in Glacier Park, we went up, we stopped at that uh, stop, you know, there's that big sign up there in Glacier Park on Highway 2, you know, it talks about the, the mountains, you know, and the divide and being that, um, what it is. And it's just, there's something about it, you know, it, some of the oldest rock, well, youngest on the planet, actually, because it's some of the newest, tallest mountains. Um, but like, what it is, is just miraculous. I don't know. I, I I, the words can't describe yeah. the feeling, yeah. Um, no. Especially that connectivity that I get from those stories that you know my grandpa learned from his grandpa, and the that native side um, of the mountains of the Two Medicine Valley. The fact that I can go to Glacier Park and look at two mountains and say, "Yo, that's where my family comes from," <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean the Rockies. I mean the Rockies are phenomenal. Just absolutely, truly. You know, that's why Glacier is one of my favorite places out there. You know, you go up and you get breathtaking views to get all of that kind of um, amazement with your eyes and all of that, that awe. And, you know, I mean, I've gone to the mountains to heal, right? Totally, 100%, like, the mountains are a phenomenal place to go. So, like, I get what you mean by that. And... It, it, the four every place that's what makes planet earth amazing right is because you can get mountains you can get forests you can get oceans you can get deserts plains whatever it is they all have their own special like magic and mystic to them that make them that much that special so <laughs> i mean sure right you talk about how your mountain guy lived in the mountains it's awesome i'm with that oregon where i get the little bit of both but i love going to the desert I like right. escaping to the desert. I like, you know, I like escaping in the big forests. And and you're not wrong because I'll I'll be out in eastern Montana in the grasslands, you know, fucking sage and tumbleweeds and nothing, just flat piece of just nothing dirt. I think what it is, it's 
it's being out in the elements. And if that danger were to approach, it's you and the elements, you know, it's, there's no civilization there. And, and to me, I don't necessarily get that. At, you can get that at the beach, but there's certain places that, you know, have, have ruined that because, you know, the map, the cities are on the beach, the, you don't get that same thing, you know, uh, when we're an Olympic, you know, it'd be really cool to come across, you know, otters or a whale or whatever that you can come across on those beaches, you know, because it is open nature. And I think that's, yeah, in the desert, right? You're in the Grand Canyon, you're like, this is really cool. You're in Zion, you come across, you know, some desert bighorn sheep and I don't, it's, it's all cool. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's, uh, we live on a beautiful planet, man. Um, we, we really do. Um, and, and to the point again, why I want to take you to the Beartooths more and more to the different places I go. Uh, because I've, I've not been all over them, you know, because there's so many, there's so many different spots. I, you, it takes a lifetime to do that kind of thing. Um, but I've been lucky enough to go to a few. And like this last week, man, I went up with Jared, we drove, uh, to a little town called Nye, Montana, population unknown. That's what it says on their sign. It's <laughs> unknown. Um, there's also a sign that says, welcome to my Nye, Montana, leaving Nye, Montana, all on the same sign. Um, but what it's right there, you're right in the middle of the mountains, uh, north of Yellowstone Park, uh, in those mountains, uh, north of the park border, you have beautiful lakes waterfalls mountains trees um and we've had an interesting winter we've not had a lot of snow uh even in the mountains um so when me and jared drove up there we decided hey we're going to drive and they have a big mine uh and they like i think want to say it's like platinum plutonium like all the different like rare earth metals um there's only like two mines that mine a certain rock that they get out of this one um, and they're both owned by Russia with the other one being in Russia. This one is owned by Russia. In oh. the yeah. Like you'll, there are signs you'll pull up to some of their gates, man. And it's just all in Russian. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. If you, you really want to say like, who's our allies and enemies in war, right? Like, yeah. We'll let you buy a mine in our, <laughs> apparently it's a lot of like the cell phone, uh, metals used in our cell phones yeah. come out of there. Um, but we drove up back there, took this dirt road, 18 miles, I believe, just tell it dead ends in the middle of the forest. Um, beautiful. Me and Jared were the only ones on the road. I got that really cool picture of there's this creek and like a little, a little rapid of like where the water drops over the rocks, but the ice that froze over the oh, rocks yeah. and the water that was going under it looked really cool. Like it was, it was a cool, um, spot for sure um yeah the pictures of the ice would looked cool the way like it almost catch it almost froze in the wave you know as it's like yeah in the like uh, the rivers flowing with the wave and it kind of like i i don't know i didn't know it could really stop like that you know they, it always, was, said, they always said moving water can't really freeze so <laughs> well what's crazy is, is it was above the water yeah and the, the, it was like dripping right like like dripping like from it so it, i don't know i think that's part of the winter we've had creating it to freeze that way um you know we we'll go ice fishing sometimes and the lakes will freeze like wavy because of how you know it's a windy area but yeah just freeze because it gets so fucking cold up here sometimes <laughs> yeah no it was supposed to snow here well it did snow it just didn't stick today um i looked outside and uh, saw the snow falling, but uh, didn't stick. They said it was gonna, so I yeah, kinda hope so. Although, you know, I'm technically not supposed to leave my house because I'm in, I've been deemed to quarantine, so. <laughs> but I don't know. You can go stick your tongue on some snow, you'll get no one sick. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. What'll happen is it'll be like you know midnight when no one's outside. I'll be like, oh, I can go get some outside time now. <laughs> yeah, go uh, go stick my feet in the ground and do some grounding. So, <laughs> no, that's needed. I mean, they, I love that's what I love about going. Like you said, going to the mountains, they heal because just breathing that fresh air, looking 
and being up at a high position where you can just look for miles and miles and miles. Yeah. There's something that it, it does heal. That's <laughs> nature, yeah. man. I mean, you can go hop in the ocean for like 20 minutes in that cold ocean or even the warm ocean, right? But that salt and the way it comes onto your body, you know, that's very healing as well as being up on the top of mountains where there's those peaceful moments of like quiet, you know? Yeah. And there's equally in the forest, you know, the forest, there's a mystery to the forest that makes you think. So <laughs> I, th and I, I agree. I think that's just, you know, it's who we were before concrete and before metal, you know? Yeah. And, and rubber. Like, yeah, well, yeah. I just meant like man made things, you know, yeah, we yeah. were a part of nature. And I think that's, that's one thing that I like about being Native American is that connectivity, and I've talked about this before, is that connectivity to the earth has always made sense in the back of my mind. It's like, yeah, we're part of nature. Nature's a part of us, you know. That's not the same for someone who's, you know, third generation New Yorker. I've lived in this same, you know, my parents lived over here in this building, and now I live in this building, and I live in my square, and yeah, I go to my job in this square. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not a huge component of that. Um, I have gone on many rants about the squares um, before. Um, you know you but have. To try and give that person some some credit, or like not credit, but you know, to be on their side a little bit here. I mean, they don't know. They've never experienced, right? They've lived. If they're third generation in New York, they've lived in they've lived in the concrete jungle their whole life that now they're kind of connected to the concrete in a way. <laughs> but you're not wrong because I also think that that type of living, uh, that you, there are people who are like, no, I, I like the hustle and bustle of a city. That, that is my home place. Because um, we're different. Everyone's different. Shockers. <laughs> yeah, right. I, um, I just finished reading a uh, book I have it. I might here. I'll, I'll actually. I'll just grab it because it's it's worth the. Uh, it's super. If you're a big traveler, that kind of person, um, this is up your alley. It's some guy from Wales. First off, Ooh. but uh, go ahead and grab it. Yeah, you see my new digs. I don't even know what you're talking about. My new uh, the new crib. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, book, yeah. the book. Um, which is the mission impossible this guy's nuts so he he was became the first person to walk across mm. mongolia and then he also did top to bottom madagascar and he's also done something else too but um he writes about mongolia and madagascar in here and like there's nobody in these places madagascar is a little bit tighter there's a lot more like native people and they have a, the Madagascar stories he talks about are nuts, but the Mongolian ones is the one that really hit me. Cause he, so he's just pulling this cart across Mongolia and he'd come to like these yurts or these tents where people live, like make little cities and how generous these people were to him. And I mean, language barrier big time and this guy's from wales so he, he speaks english primarily and then these guys are mongolian um i'm not actually familiar with the language they have there but it's not like big it's city Mong mongolia you know so it's out in the middle of the sticks mongolia you're talking well you're talking like the native mongolia is that yeah they're they live in their yurts which are almost similar to the native american teepees here yeah and, and it just it's a great example of how how people are kind and the world really isn't that scary of a place you hear about going to places like the and you know you know little jimmy got mauled and skinned open but no this guy walked across just walked up to the house and said hey can i stay outside i'm in my tent and be like no come in and sleep tonight <laughs> sleep in the yurt tonight <laughs> um and I, I and see and that that makes sense to me especially being native right it's always 
everyone's welcome, you know, in your teepee, especially, right? Like I, I did a, I did a whole project on the Montana teepee, you know, I took each tribe of Montana and figured out their differences. But one of the similarities across all lot of native cultures, we will invite you in to our homes. We will feed you, you know, even if you're our enemy, we will take care of you because that's just the human thing to do to one another because you are no different than I. You shit, I shit, you put your pants on the same way I put my pants on. You know, it's the same in that sense, you know, Hawaiian culture, you know, ever you're just welcome inside the home. Yeah, and, 100%. And that's what it is. And I look at these cultures and they're some of the most, you know, the poverty stricken people and yet they are still willing to give you a little bit of something yeah and and that's what it is it's i don't have a much to offer but i have something to offer um that's why whenever you do work with any native american tribe um tribal organization or group gifts are usually exchanged it's you know thank you we appreciate this thank you it's it's a respect and it's a respect of you're no different than I am. And I see that, you know, you could be a billionaire and I could be the poorest man on earth, but we're both human and I'm still going to give you my beads. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's not just even gifts, just the fact, mm. you know, not like a beads or anything like that, just giving the gift of a place to sleep or a meal. gift of food, the gift of water, you know, those are that right there goes. And it just shows that, you know, people are kind, people understand, you know, people are just generally good. There's a lot of bad press out there about a lot of bad people. And so I think we get in this circle where we think, you know, everyone is bad when there's a lot of danger out there. But I, I find that to not be true. I find that people are generally caring and giving and even when they have nothing you know that's why that's how i try to live i try to give you know what i can to whoever i can and then help out however i can that's why i'm trying to learn another language to help travelers so they can communicate giving the gift of communication in the land that they don't know <laughs> that's awesome i mean you're the gift of company sometimes a lot of people just want to be heard yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't have a podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be on that podcast, email, <laughs> email us at wanderingwayspodcast at gmail.com. And shameless plugs. <laughs> w A N D E R I N G W A Y S P O D C A S T at wanderingwayspodcast at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. We'll have you on. We'll hear you out. Um, but no, I mean, it's you're right. It's the simple, we all want to be happy. We all want to be healthy and, and we all want to be good in our own way. Right. Um, I think that's just, you know, bad cells, uh, negativity cells fight cell because it's out of the norm. It's, it's different. Uh, it's not what's supposed to happen. Um, I think that's why when we look at, um, the negative, like, the negativity in the media right now, right? It, it, it sells. You're going to watch the news if, if you think someone's going to attack you um, because you want to know if they are. It yeah. might never happen, and but they, they've sold you on it. Um, I think the another thing to look at when it comes to, uh, um, when it comes to the negativity and all um, is like sports, right? Why isn't net, like tennis or curling or these non-contact sports as fun to watch. First off, curling is amazing to watch. Well, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Curling is phenomenal. Oh, <laughs> that's why it's the most watched winter Olympic sport. You're right. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I just mean like, it's like, why is football the number one? Because there's contact, there's heavy hitting. People are, you know, that guy might die. I mean, he won't, but the possibility of that, you know, why was ancient Rome and their gladiators such a big conquest? And it's because that sells. People want to see that because 
I don't necessarily want to hit you, but to watch someone else hit someone else, it's entertaining, you know? It is, it is, it is entertaining. Um, I will best. admit I have watched a fair share of football games. Um, I've watched a couple boxing matches, boxing fights, MMA fights. It is entertaining. Um, right. At the same time, I think all of those athletes deserve a great amount of respect for doing what they do, especially the fighters. Because, uh, you know, like, what was it? Mike Tyson's um, last <laughs> fight where uh, the guy asked him, like, are you scared? And he goes, yeah, of course I'm scared. <laughs> I'm 56 years old. I'm about to box. <laughs> you know, I think that's like the most truest statement ever. <laughs> yeah, but I love it because I make millions doing it. And I do this, yeah. you know, like, you duh. know, yeah, <laughs> there's an art to it. There's an art. It's their, it's their art. <laughs> but there's an art to everything. There's an art to computer programming. There's 100%. an art to art. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's why, that's why I say it's their art. You know, everyone's got their, their art. Some people, it's just, some people have the more true tradition uh, or true definition of art where it's the painting, the sculptures, the pottery, uh, the uh, macaroni, you know, pictures, you know, like some people that's literally their art. Other exactly. people, their art is uh, plumbing. Their art, medicine. Yeah, yeah, you know, their art is literally whatever they're doing. It just, it's just what it is. Well, and I think, I think uh, that 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 you you hit on a good point there um, when when you talk about that art because I look at this podcast, I look at like the things we do out in nature, right? Well, if we want to be really good at nature, we got to be out in nature, right? So if you're at home and you're like, I want to be really good at this, well, be really good at that. But no, you have to put the time and effort into it, you know? Uh, like I said, I went last week into the mountains because I had to force my, I, I had to get in the car and drive there and do it because who else is going to do it for me? And I did it. And I had fun. I had an yeah. amazing time in the mountains. Like that's what you got to do. <laughs> For sure. Um, it's interestingly enough, you know, cause we're in this, we're in the middle of this pandemic or by maybe hopefully by the time this comes out, uh, we're on the tail end of the pandemic. Um, you know, it's starting to sound like, you know, when COVID is over, it's starting to sound like, Oh, I'll hit you up sometime when you never do. <laughs> so it's starting to get a little depressing. But anyways, I read an article and it's about hopefully turning people into more eco-friendly travelers, not necessarily the hippy dippy, you know, like me kind of traveler, but just being more conscious of it. And it gave out some tips and I think some of them were pretty I think pretty spot on, um, you know, and like the first one is, you know, look up, you know, <laughs> stars and the moon. Yeah. It's incredible what those are and you don't have to go far to see it. You don't have to destroy a lot of land and ecosystems to see the moon. Uh, light pollution is a thing. So like, I get that, but you know, for the most part, you don't need a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, another, I another big one is, and we've preached it on here before. Check out your local parks. Check out the state parks. Check out the national parks. Check out your local community park, whatever it is. <laughs> no, I like it. I mean, I like your look up one because I think that's something that we almost have strayed so far away from the stars. It's it, it's almost embarrassing as as human like as humanity as a whole. I'm talking. So the average human versus the NASA's and those type of space organizations, because to me, of course, they're going to be looking at the stars daily. Um, and there are people doing that for humanity. And yes, we're more advanced. We can map the galaxies and universes and whatnot. But the understanding of the stars is something that I think has gone away. You know, like I look at like Joe's generation 
you know, and Joe's my younger brother. He's, you know, we're 15 years apart. Um, uh, he, I hate to say this, but I don't think he knows what the fuck the Big Dipper is. Oh. <laughs> I, he might, he might because he's in my family, but like yeah. that generation, because you're so stuck on their tablets. Yeah. They understand that the Big Dipper is a thing and this is that and the North Store. They might know that because of what they've learned. It's a really interesting question. But when you're actually physically out there in nature and you can identify these things, for example, like this summer when I was following Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn and their whole thing, and then their, con their you know, confluence or convergence where they, they, you know, Saturn and Jupiter came together in December, that whole thing to me, like, that was a shock to people, but it's like, you know, hundreds of years ago, that's all they knew. That was the entertainment. What are the stars doing tonight? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you should right? know, like, yeah, that was, yeah, that was uh, what Game of Thrones or whatnot was the stars. <laughs> so, but you're but not wrong. It's it a awesome. super, I'm actually now super curious if you were to just ask someone, do you know what the Big Dipper is? What they would say. Well, and, and you know, I'm kind of afraid to ask here in Montana too, because we got a, one of our more famous ice cream shops is called the Big Dipper. If you're so you'll probably get a lot of people saying like oh the ice cream job yeah exactly. <laughs> um and <laughs> well, we'll see right well i mean you see like um you'll see people put up like uh pictures of like jesus and they'll be like uh, i don't know is that uh george w bush or <laughs> something you know <laughs> so like that's why it i'm a little curious or well, what's that? Jimmy Kimmel does like the dumb um, people on the side of the road or the <laughs> sidewalk there. They'll ask them questions and they just act like they know it. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah, yeah, no, I like uh, totally. Because <laughs> no one wants, we've created a society that no one wants to be wrong in because if you're wrong, you're a loser. And it's like, that's not necessarily it. You're just wrong. It's okay to be wrong. It's how you yeah. learn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that is uh, very, that's very true. Very, very true. Um, it oh. is okay to be wrong, people. You know, and I, I'm sitting here thinking about a better constellation to, to probably ask, because the Big Dipper is kind of more, yeah, the North Star, all that, right? No, I think it would be worth saying the Big Dipper. What about Orion's Belt? I, yeah, I don't know. Because I think that one too, right? You have the pyramids in Egypt. You have very, not only the pyramids in Egypt, but how many structures on this planet mimic Orion's belt? Yeah. Ancient. Orion's belt, you know, if I had to rate it, I'd give it three stars. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys don't get that, that's because Orion's belt is three stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck i love it i love it because it's funny and i think that's why we wandering ways is here because we feel like it's our duty to share our stories and share our knowledge with people because you know everyone else with the podcast just wants to interview everybody and about whatever you know it's whatever podcast no we need to talk about nature because we're getting away from that guys we need yeah. to get into nature we need to educate people on how to be smart in nature because we're, we're starting to hit that curve where we're going back down because we think we know everything because of technology and we don't yeah i mean last topic before i jump into like a small adventure i did out here um you know everyone when you hear the word evolution you think we're getting better as a species but no evolution just means we're changing it doesn't all have to be positive changes it could be a negative change um well I if like i'm curious into possible negative changes i i encourage anybody out there to look into breathing and how we breathe because uh, that's a huge evolutionary change in the wrong direction that humans have gone and i i agree because i think i think the way you're saying it is people will will uh say adaptation is evolution and i would say most adaptation are positive because you're adapting to the environment that you're in to 
essentially better yourself in that environment. And those two often get um, confused with one another, um, you know, because yeah, evolution is just how things have changed over life. It, yeah. And what surprises me is there's a lot of people out there that don't believe it. But, you know, if a darker skinned person and a lighter skinned person have a baby and the baby comes out looking not dark, not light, but somewhere in the middle, that's evolution. <laughs> you know, that's evolution. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Like you're you're, you're not wrong there. Like, that is a good kind of example of the evolution. Like, um, but anyways, boy. to kind of hop into uh, <laughs> to jump into an adventure, and the true definition of just getting out and doing it <laughs> is uh, a bike ride I went on last weekend, two weekends ago. I'm Please, starting it's, to blur it's my. Long it, well, the yeah, time is just a construct, people. But anyways, um, I wanted to take my bike out because I like riding my bike. And I got on Google Maps. I have found this road that kind of loops up and around and back into Ashland. Um, I did not know how long the road was. So I just told myself I'm going to follow it, see where it goes. And if I hit a certain point, I'm going to turn around. Uh, fun fun fact, I ended up taking a wrong turn anyway. So when I got, I found a spot, I looked on Google Maps. I wasn't even on the road anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, hit some snow because I got high enough up. It was like freezing cold. Hit about 15 kilometers on the bike and said, that's time to turn around. And so made my way back down for the day, almost froze my fingers off with frostbite. I think I actually almost got it. Um, but, you know, were, just the fact that I got out, I needed to do it, so. Were your fingers, um, and this is something that, you know, growing up here in Montana, we learn because yeah, we deal with the snow. Um, were your fingers turning white? Um, I don't remember the color. I just remember... It was probably more frost nip, you know, because they get that more of that red. And it was mostly due to the wind because mm -hmm. the whole 15 kilometers that I went before I turned around, it was all uphill. So it was 15 kilometers just straight uphill the whole time. The other way, a lot more fun, a lot less work, a lot colder because of the wind up in the cold. So I'd have to stop every once in a while and like put them in my pants, kind of warm them up can like a, I'd go for a while because that's the sign your fingers will go from that pink pinkish red to a white yeah and, and that's that's how you'll know uh frostbite's coming on um early yeah I, I frostbite would be a little bit extreme um because I never was worried about that but I mean they were my hands were getting cold <laughs> well if you're riding and that's and that's another thing people don't understand. And and living out here on the eastern front of the Rockies, wind chill is a huge factor, right? You can. Well, be I got gloves for my bike now, so oh. I I got gloves to go ride in my bike now. So there you go. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on me. <laughs> Fool me twice. <laughs> but people don't realize that you know it could be a twenty degree day, but you have twenty mile an hour wind, and it's you know at zero it feet. Zero degrees is what your body, the air temperature actually is hitting your body. Yeah. Or whatever that difference may be. There's a whole chart that shows you like how fast the wind's blowing, what the actual temperature is. This is what it is. Um, another fun thing to do if you're, if it's zero degrees, zero degrees Fahrenheit, um, or yes, zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's, That's it, cold. It, yeah. It, well, it gets that cold here. But if you are at home and it ever gets that, go boil some water right and once it's boiling take it outside and throw it and it'll turn into snow so i didn't know that i didn't yeah. know that <laughs> it's cold i've never done it i've never lived in a place that cold so i've done it a few times <laughs> oh i'm sure i'm sure if i lived in a place that got that cold i probably would have done it at least into the double digits <laughs> oh yeah for sure it's it's cool i mean it's one. It's science, and and if yeah. you don't, if you don't believe in science, do that, and then you're like, that's magic. Well, it's just a way <laughs> of explaining it. 
magic and silent magic and science are they share line so <laughs> they correlate <laughs> yeah, or no they, they cause it not correlate yeah they're uh, they're very similar i believe or but, they will seem similar they aren't the same but they do seem similar well i'm really yeah. excited for your new your new spot because it sounds like you got some good good terrain around you to really find yourself get yourself lost um you're not too far from crater lake in reality no no this is uh this there's a lot to do here there's a lot to explore um you know i haven't even really touched any of it even though i went 15 kilometers in a road that you know i didn't see a lot of people i barely scratched the surface um Klamath falls yeah uh, there's a park literally across the street from my apartment i've been running through you know it's a fairly big park um i still have more to explore of that so i mean there's plenty plenty of outdoor activities here and it's pretty outdoor activity friendly um community a lot of people are doing it you see a lot of people bikes running um skiing stuff like that that's awesome i mean that's and that's like you said it's just getting out and doing it you know whenever i travel for work to all these different cities you know it's funny i've been watching uh gray's anatomy with thea because she's really into it i'm like yeah great show it is i mean it you learn you learn a little bit from it um i mean i don't know how much of it's true but you learn the 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 stresses that actually probably do exist in a hospital um with patients coming in and i think that's a huge part of the show um but every time we see seattle man that's a big motherfucking city yeah. <laughs> and i'm like well i've walked from lake hello my wanderers before we get going with this episode of the podcast i do just want to remind you guys to check out our other social medias the youtube the instagram the teespring to get that swag make sure to check us out individually zach gray of quartz lake zach gray the rougarou make sure you check out myself reverend marcus all that fun stuff the links are below in the bio um, all you gotta do is click that bio look for it and boom you're on your way make sure if you guys want to be part of the podcast or questions to be heard on the podcast email us at wanderingwayspodcast at gmail.com or quartzlakeproductions at gmail.com we love the feedback we love the input all of it is amazing and we love you guys for listening it's awesome so let's keep wandering on but anyway as i was saying lake washington right there in, in northern seattle i've walked from that all the way down to the downtown ferry um and uh Oh, what's that park? It's it's called a little park down there. Um, I I actually don't know much of Seattle, so I'm no I, help here. It's, nah, it has a name, um, but I'm all over that downtown. You know, north to south, east to west. I've in like Miami. I walked from my hotel, which was in downtown Miami, all the way to Miami Beach. Um, in New York, I walked from Battery Park in Manhattan all the way to halfway through Central Park, you know. Uh, San Diego, I've walked from downtown to uh, Pacific Beach. Um, and, and all that was, you know, and Portland all over, you know. And like, to me, it's, it's go see it, go do it, go experience it. Uh, go explore the area, you know, because as much fun as it is sitting in your Uber, you know, looking at this stuff as you go by, it's not, you know. There's so much of a world to experience. Even if you're in green bay wisconsin when there's nothing to do you know it's a different place it's different people you can learn from almost any situation you put yourself into but you gotta go and do it yeah that's the, yeah that's the hard part yeah that's but you gotta go and do it journey of a thousand steps begins with one step so you know gotta go out and do it anyways it's kind of uh not too bad of a time to start to do the thing because i'm always the guy <laughs> that leads into this part of the <laughs> you know gotta always break it up um but it is time for the final words so 
going into it any final words my guy um you know again like we've always preached just just go do it you know nike it's their reason it's their swoosh because just do it um and that's why i'm going out to oregon next week you know i'm i want to go out there i want to see my family i want to go see the coast i want to make it happen i'm going to do the, the right things necessary to make it happen for my given my situation and i think in life if you're ever in that point that's something you could do you know um you're sitting at home and you don't have a lot of cash but you know you know you can set some aside to plan something that you want to do you want to go on a trip you want to go on an adventure make it happen plan budget yourself you know there's so many different things you know i i look at uh I look at my daily life. I eat out a lot. Not a good habit. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to break that habit. Uh, but I looked at the monetary side of that, of being able to go out and eat every day that I was doing it. And I was like, you know, if I save this, I can travel. You know, if I don't get the five dollar coffee for ten weeks, oh, well, that adds up. You know, that's fifty bucks. Um, all that. The little things you can do to make something happen. Um, you know, you're. A lot, a lot of times traveling somewhere, 90% of the cost is the travel. The other 10%, you know, you can go to a grocery store in Phoenix and get your eggs, your bacon, your toast. You can go to a grocery store in, in San Diego and get the same stuff, you know, Seattle and make it work. You know, I think that's the thing people don't understand is, is, you know, I guarantee we go to Iceland and they have a superstore. You can get food there. PB and J's. All day, buddy. All day. But <laughs> again, you just got to do it. No, amen. Over to you. Amen. I love it. I love it. Uh, Reverend's final words of wisdom. Um, you know, first off, thank you guys so much uh, for listening, uh, continually listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. Tuning in to all of the guests that we had. Hopefully we can bring in some more amazing guests here in the future we have should have some awesome ones lined up here real soon to get you guys some awesome uh chit chats with people that do crazy nature things uh if you do or know of someone hit us up to uh wandering ways podcast at gmail.com the links below you know the deal um that whole fun gigs but as for the actual uh reverend words of wisdom here you know be beautiful. Everybody is generally a good person. Yes, I understand that there's always bad apples. That, that no, nothing in the world is like truly absolute. So there's always going to be odd numbers. But generally, people are nice. They just want to be happy. They're just normal people. So treat them the same way you would treat yourself. Um, but with that being said, peace out, everybody. Bye.